views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA region number five here in... uh, the FEMA State of America. So just want to say thank you all for listening to Tando Radio Show. We have a live show for you today. Today is October the 30th. It's a Monday, 2017. Looking forward to doing the show with you all. And if you'd like to get in on the conversation, at any point during the show, you can give us a call, 866-510-9025. 866-510-9025, then hit star, star, C-U-N-Q, and we'll bring you up. And definitely will uh, like to have an engagement because a monologue is much more important than a dialogue. So make sure that we are talking about it. Um, and more, more importantly, even more importantly than that, make sure you're doing things about what you do know because that is critically is it's a critical component to us getting to where you want to be and collectively as a community and as a species, as a living species. So very, very important. So make sure that aligns with the overall uh, goodness and, and the overall benev- benevolency of the species. So definitely, you know, it's very, very important, everyone, before we get into the show that we handle some administrative duties where we say, hey, Black Talk Radio Network is in need of your support because you're the only ones that are supporting Black Talk Radio Network who Black Talk Radio Network was actually put together to service. That would be you, to serve you. So please give some of your financial energy. Give whatever it is that you can to ensure that this network will continue to grow and be here every time you turn it on. You you know, think about all that you have learned and what you've come in come in contact with because of Black Talk Radio Network and all of the programs that that are here. That is, you know, the fruit that has been been used. But you have to you have to ensure that you you feed the roots because I think um, part of that is also um, when you don't it's it's you really become the system and this is how the system works so well because it teaches you just just to take and never ever ever to give especially to to that uh that that is giving to you You know it's just like anything else is a car or anything else if you just drive a car without putting gas in it or or just for you with with you and your 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 business or your overall livelihood if if people just continuously took from you um but how would that do for you in your overall standings? You 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 would know exactly. So we got to look at it uh, from that uh, pr- perspective. And I need to uh, make my donation uh, this month, which I which I need to do uh, much more than than what I've done in the past, and I will do that 
And so I'm going to make sure that I write myself, uh, send myself a a message um, for this month to do that, and I'm going to do that right after after the show. No, no time like the present. Let me write myself really quickly a note to do just that. I need to, or I know someone that's listening. Um, make sure um, I do do that, please. Uh, you know who you are. Thank you. Okay, so um, make sure that you give some of your uh, financial energy in uh, so that this network, oh, they're not on the line, so I need to make a, a okay, I will. You've got to write this down. Okay, here we go. All right, so make sure you make your, give your financial energy to support this network and to ensure that it is here going forward in the future so that we can have everything sorry got it okay got it so that we can make sure that this network is where we need it to be and going forward going forward in bringing what's necessary and that we position ourselves accordingly. You can do that by going to the website for the network, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, www. Excuse me. www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. And once you're there, you'll see on the home page, you can see where you can give some of your financial energy by way of a donation so that this network will be on for the coming future. Very, very important that we do that, okay? Also, you can support the network by being a member in its social media outlet known as BTR Community. And BTR Community was put together for you to engage in your social media activities without being adversely affected by Facebook and, and tweeting and telling and, and, and everything else that's there. So make sure you do do that. Okay, and very, very, very easy to do. Just give what it is that you can so this network can continue to grow. What's up, Brother Bragg? See, you just jumped in. Um, okay, so, and I see my man, uh, uh, Brother Wade, my man, I don't know who that is, uh, but I see my man Ramon uh, there. So check out that uh, opportunity, $24 a year, and you will be a part of BTR community. That's $24 a year. Okay, make sure you're a part of that because that's where you can, uh, this only place that I post and, and it's the only place that I engage and it's the only place that I will engage. I won't do anything else. Not interested at all. So make sure that you're doing that. Okay? Now, also, if you would like to acquire real money, you can do that by going to prosperitymint.com, prosperitymint.com, and engaging in seeing what's there in inventory. Then make your purchase. Um, but before you make your purchase, please email info at prosperitymint.com. Info at prosperitymint.com is to your benefit. Uh, someone will get back to you uh, right away uh, or in, the, in a reasonable amount of time to, to make sure that you understand the buying process. And that's very, very important. It's to your benefit because it's, gonna, it's something that's going to save you. I'm just going to put it that way. Something that is going to save you by doing it. Please, uh, if I give some directions to you, um, I don't always disclose what it is because at the, at the appropriate, at this, at this time, it's not appropriate for me to do that. Hint, hint. So please do, do that. Um, for those of you that do do that, I greatly appreciate uh, that. And then you, as soon as I tell you why, you're like, oh, thank goodness. So make sure. Okay, so... You can, uh, even though you're not paid as a king or a queen or a lady and a gentleman, you can definitely save as one in real money. Very, 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 very critically important. Okay, next thing is if you would like to engage in the crowdfunding opportunity uh, that we have, uh, definitely text me, 951-790-8330. Once again, 951 Seven nine zero eight three three zero. We have a phenomenal uh, crowdfunding campaign where you can 
actually, and it's completely legal, sanctioned by the SEC uh, because of the Jobs Act that was signed into law in, in 2012 by the uh, celebrity figurehead, former President Obama, making it legal. And what is what is basically crowdfunding? Well, for those of you, um, you've been around crowdfunding funding your whole life. But basically, the economy is crowdfunding. Um, the crowd is, is funding someone else's agenda. If you go into a football game, that's crowdfunding. Because you're going to the game, even though you're getting the game. But even if you don't go to the game, you crowdfund it. Most likely, if you live in a city where they have an NFL team, a baseball team, a, fo- uh, a basketball team, a hockey team, the overall stadium in which they, they play in was actually crowdfunded by the taxpayers for the stadium to be built so it could be privatized. The profits can be privatized. Oh, you didn't know that. Yes, that's crowdfunding. When you go to church and they pass around the offering plate, you put something in the plate, that's crowdfunding. Now there's a way in which you can engage in crowdfunding where you could be the beneficiary from that. And that's a, a opportunity uh, that, that we have, phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity. Uh, you definitely want to get involved in it. Give me a call. Text me, text me, text me, 951-790-8330, and just say, hey, Dave, would like to get involved. BTR community is crowdfunding. Scotty is absolutely right. It's crowdfunding. BTR community is crowdfunding. And this is, these are some of the crowdfunding things that we want to get into. And then for those of you that are already members in this crowdfunding, um, we had our first call uh, yesterday uh, evening. Um, and one of the things that we do as we start to grow, we definitely want to uh, take part in uh, BTR communities because uh, we wanted to do it correctly. Uh, and, and my man Scotty said we use some of the funds to help pay for our DC trip. Exactly. It's crowdfunding. So this is where you can do it individually so that we can engage in this in a mo- more proactive way where collective prudence will reign. It's an opportunity for that to, to happen. And we actually have a crowdfunding uh, format where you will actually gain from it and you will be the beneficiary of it and, and position yourself definitely to prepare, get out and get from currency and take from currency and make the great switch into real money and the leverage that you have puts put you in a position to where you no longer need the economy, the economy needs you. That's what we're trying to build and so that's what we're doing. So uh, if you'd like to get in on, involved in that, definitely text me, 951-790-8330. And uh, we'll definitely uh, get to help with it. I've been really busy on that t- side of things um, because it's, it's really worth it. Jump on it. Okay. Also, if you would like to trade the cryptocurrencies, you could do that with us through um, ourcryptocurrency.com. Go to ourcryptocurrency.com. Uh, but before you uh, do that, I would definitely say, definitely first text me about the crowdfunding opportunity uh, and then then look at that. This 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 one is much more uh it's a better position so you need to get caught up on your crowdfund crowdfunding and you need to get caught up on your crypto game it's currency but see the key is that is leverage currency that you can switch into you can change it into real money uh, which is phenomenal and i'm gonna just tell you this the the overall crowdfunding is a phenomenal thing because what you can do you can get like the, uh, they pay out in Bitcoins. You can get Bitcoin as you start to accumulate. You'll, you will be accumulating Bitcoin, Bitcoin below market price. But the Bitcoin that is given to you will have full market value. Y'all heard me? You'll be accumulating Bitcoin below market asking price, below the price of Bitcoin but you will be paid in Bitcoin that will have full market value. Oh, man. Anybody that doesn't want to do that, um, I understand um, you are not aware of what's really happening. And in, in, in so there's something that you miss. You know, one person said to me, those that are wealthy understand the value of an opportunity where those that aren't either can't do it because they don't have the means or they didn't seize on the opportunities to change their economic system, their uh, situation. You know, it's a, it's a bunch of variables uh, that plays into it. Um, but 
one thing is that we can never uh, park ourselves in poverty. It's, it's a matter of thinking, 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 strategizing, and having an action plan to, to, to change that. And if you have an action plan, uh, the likelihood of you uh, changing that direction is is much greater than waiting for someone to uh, get you out of it or waiting for the overall climate to change. It won't change in your general, – generally, it doesn't make that change um, in the generation. Um, there, there will be a generational change, but it, I don't think it will be a generational tra- tra- change – for the, your family namesake for a while, maybe two or three generations, then it will. But believe me, if the system is going to be the one that's going to be the overall conductor of that change, it's going to be where uh, you and your, your family lineage will be the overall uh, people of so-called uh, preference while others will, will actually Will, will be subjugated underneath you and they want to give that appearance because that's what the system does and that's how it stays in power. Um, it keeps a balance of the, the haves and the have-nots fighting so that they won't see what's really going on. So, wonderful point. And, and, you know, we all get so deeply into it that we can't see the forest because of the trees. So... You really have to look at why is this thing so profitable? Why is it not? Why hasn't it been been changed? Because it's something that's been around for a very, very long time and has learned how to manipulate the psyche of people. One, you teach them what to think, and they shall do it. You know, you heard the old saying, "Build it, and they will come." Well, they built it, and we keep coming along for the ride. So, definitely, very, very, very important. Okay. So let's get into what's in the news. My man, Roz is not there. Oh, there's Roz. Um, so I'm going to jump into what's in the news. Uh, Roz, if you wanted to pick out some of your, um, if you can, if you wanted to pick out some of your uh, articles that you posted that you wanted to highlight, uh, definitely do that, and I will do uh, mine as well. Uh, let me know by unmuting uh, yourself. I'll see you there, then I'll know that you uh, that you're able to do that. If you're not able to do it, uh, that's okay. But I definitely want, if you, if you post, uh, there my man is, if you post, I definitely want you because there was a reason why you put it there. And I think that's very, very, very important. Okay. So my man, Roz, what's up, Roz? Hey, peace, peace. How you doing? Peace, peace, my brother. How you feeling? Hey, I'm good. It's just been a wild day, but everything is going, going good. It's just, um, Hey. Trying to get some stuff done. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm good, brother. Hey, how's the weather there? What's what's happening weather wise? Yeah, they had a big storm that came through last night. It seemed like um just buckets were coming out of the sky. Um, I know that they said about 1.5 million people in the in the northeast um lost power. I wasn't one of them, thankfully. Um, I hope, you know, Thomas in New York and all my other people up in the NYC area in North Jersey, I hope they're okay too. But um, I didn't get affected by it at all, and thankfully, because usually, you know, we'll get, like, flooding and stuff in our basement once in a while. But it was good. Right. Everything was cool. So I'm good, thankfully. So, yeah, I'm not one of those people that they're talking about. Cause I think I posted an article about that too in, um, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the Tampa thread. Yeah, yeah. But we're doing okay. How's everything with you down there? Mm-hmm. Man, it's, everything is cool, bro. Everything is cool. You know, still on the grind and still busy. Um, but definitely uh, call me real quick after the show, man. I want to give you an update on some things. Sure. No problem. No problem. As, as, Absolutely. As well, okay? Okay. Sure. All right. Bro, you want, you, you, want, you want me to go first or you want to go first? Cause I don't know if oh, you, you have something to do. Yeah. You might want to go first. Um, you, well, you could you could go first if you want, and then I'll go after you. That's fine. Or, or which, if you want me to go first, that's fine too. Which, with whatever is good with you. Yeah, go ahead. If you set up, go ahead. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Um, the as the first one I posted actually I got from Jerry. He posted this yesterday, and it's um I forgot my pen. An epic tale of losing thirty thousand dollars. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I thought it was a phenomenal <laughs> article. Just about the you know the importance of writing down your passwords and making sure that you you have them you know physically written and you put it in a secure place um, so that you know if your memory slips, which is going to always happen at some point, 
you know, the, especially depending <laughs> on your stress and the stuff you're dealing with. And the last thing you want to do is not have access to your own account and you have $30,000 worth of Bitcoin you can't use. So that's what happened to this person in the article. I thought it was um, quite informative and just just a, a harbinger of what could happen if you don't, you know, do things as 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 thoroughly as possible while uh, dealing with this cryptocurrency. So I thought it was important. Um, another oh, wait, word, hey, Rod, um, let me, let me real quick, let me, let me yeah. just um, say something. This is definitely going to play into today's show, and I'm glad that uh, Jerry had posted and Rod saw the significance enough to post it here uh, because it's going to play into today's show. Very, very important. Some Some very fundamental things that we do, um, and if we fail to do them, those fundamental things sometimes catch us, and when they catch us, they hurt bad. So, great, great article. Go ahead, Ross. No problem. Um, I had another one um, I got from naturalnews.com on how to disinfect water in a survival situation. So, it has just different ways you can um, disinfect and, and, and clean your water before drinking it, especially if you're in a, a, a survival situation. So I thought it was imperative to put that out there. Yep. Um, the ne- next one is uh, they found a brain scan that can determine suicide risk in people. So I guess they found like a pattern of the way the brain shows up on the scan, and based on the specific pattern, they're able to determine if a person is suicidal or not or prone to moving in that direction. So I thought that was quite important, and I thought it was interesting just because you're seeing technology going away where um, they're starting to invade our inner space um, and, and mm-hmm. be able to um, diagnose the inner space the way we see them do with the planet, the outer space, <laughs> as far as the uh, use of satellites and um, technology that can see into the body. All of that stuff is being augmented, and, and, um, and uh, I would say... It, the technology is moving in the direction where there's going to be no privacy <laughs> internally as well as externally. So um, I thought that was interesting. Number one was eight items that disappeared immediately after Hurricane Harvey. Um, that was from askaprepper.com. And um, I thought that was really interesting. I had some good things in there in regards to um, just basic survival um, items that disappeared almost instantly on the shelves and um, just to kind of be aware of those things you can you should keep on hand so that if something happens you have some sort of stash there that you can refer to in case the same thing happens which it will um let me see oh that was the article i just saw about the one that, that about the storm that i was just talking about um the next one oh russia casts a long shadow over cuba this was from um dw.com and the interesting about interesting thing about that is that um, they're saying that Russia is not interested in helping the island recover as it has been in the past. So it's kind of like um, the U.S. is, they they describe it as this relationship with the U.S. going cold, and the relationship with Russia is kind of at a stalemate because they just have no interest in assisting the island in the way in which they did in the past. So it's going to be interesting because Cuba's been pretty independent so hopefully they'll be able to weather the storm and um, it won't adversely affect them too bad. But I know that they're already in a rough situation after the storms that came through there. But I thought that that was just a telling article about the relationship with Russia and Cuba that um, I think should be interesting in regards to things moving forward in the Western Hemisphere. Um, the other one was actually a continuation of what you discussed with Thomas Friday. Whitefish Energy hires first lobbyist as scrutiny of Puerto Rico contract mounts. So remember Thomas was talking about Friday that this whitefish company had um, basically had two people working for the company, but they got, you know, I think it was like $300 million contract to rebuild. Yeah, the $300 million dollar contract. Um, yeah, Thomas so said. it's developing now, and there's like a whole legal situation that's mounting around this situation with this company, and it looks like they're, um, they're hiring a lobbyist to try and facilitate uh, their criminal activity, because I don't know how two people are going to go to Puerto Rico and rebuild the grid. And I don't think they can hire people fast enough to get it done because it's an emergency situation. So uh, this is just how the system works as far as that's concerned. It, it's always a smoke screen and just horrific behavior, criminal criminal behavior going on in the back end. Um, I think that, oh, this is interesting. Futurism.com, machine learning is making it difficult to tell humans and computers apart. So we're getting to that place, you know, the, the whole idea of uh, – you know the, the the melding of man and machine and and the way that 
computers are behaving and being taught to behave, um, it's it's becoming like they said harder to determine who's who. If it's a, a a bot or a person or some sort of artificial intelligence or intelligence or a person, um, and they're also talking about in another article, Axios.com, robot security guards are hitting the street. So Terminator. It's becoming realer with each passing day. <laughs> um, so just be right. prepared for that. I would say, you know, you're going to come across this type of stuff a lot sooner. And um, the last one I was going to touch on was, oh, it's actually two, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, two. Um, yeah, this one is very interesting. It's um, doctor uses iPhone accessory to diagnose his own cancer. So he was using a, an app that they developed and the app actually diagnosed him with cancer. <laughs> and and he figured out he got cancer through this app. So the algorithms are that accurate now. And I just found that to be interesting. I think that article came out a couple of days ago, but I just thought it was really telling. Cause I know you were saying you were interested in AI and finding out more about it. So I think it's just good for everyone to be aware. Um, the next one is called Twisted Light Can Create Ultra-Fast Internet and Make Fiber Optics Obsolete. So um, I think Thomas in New York talked about this too, Li-Fi, um, the use of light instead of um, the fiber optic cables. And they're talking about now using these uh, winding coils that use light as a medium of information exchange and that it can make fiber optics obsolete and it'll make the internet, internet super fast. Um, I don't know if hmm. you got the piece this day. There was one that talks about how robots help Trump get elected, according to an Oxford academic. Um, and I don't, I'm assuming that there was some manipulation of technology in some way, which they were doing in every election anyway, as far as losing right. certain um, votes and then adding votes to people who didn't really get them. So um, it was interesting. And then, uh, yes, this is the last one I wanted to hit you with. Um, it's, uh, they found mysterious rock art in uninhabited caves in the Caribbean. This was in uh, islands off the coast of Puerto Rico. It's one of, uh, it's called Mona Island. And they found these, uh, these cave paintings on there. And, um, this seems to be changing their understanding of the human, human habitation on that island and in that area as far as the indigenous people that were there. So I thought it was just interesting. Um, that's it. I'll stop there because I know you got some things to drop too. And there's a few other good articles there, but those are the ones I was going to um, touch on for, for today. Cool, cool. Great, great articles as always, Raj. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, check out, you know, the uh, what's in the news and what we post in, in, in uh, Tando uh, is, a, is a lot of great information. Um, it's, it's no reason for you not to be in, informed um, from a different perspective. Um, and so, you know, it was a couple of good things. Uh, Raj talked about the eight things. Um, and then the Cuba, um, I definitely want to uh, touch on those things because one of the, the things that I posted was about, and it has everything to do with today's show. So let me just uh, tell you a couple of things that I posted, and it's gonna, one is going to piggyback off of um, uh, what Rise had posted. But the eight things that I thought were significant is uh, this one comes from the, whoa, let me, sometimes it doesn't always, the profile doesn't always fit. Let me make sure because I know I think I missed one. Oh, I didn't need to do that. Okay, one second. Okay, uh, here we go. A couple of articles. Uh, I posted this one from Express.co. Europe wants to create its own version of the IMF for one very interesting reason. And that reason, in my opinion, is because they realize that the U.S. will no longer be economically viable uh, uh, or significant, so there's going to be a void that needs to be filled, and they're ready to do it. So then another article, and I wanted to say thanks to my man Kevin for sending this one. Um, it was, uh, oh, it is, um, so I, another one, no, no, before we get there, another um, one that I posted, uh, this um, comes from, from uh, mattclassy.com. Uh, and it is China speeds ahead of the U.S. as quantum race escalates. Worrying scientists, the U.S. And, and other Western scientists have voiced awe and even alarm as China's quicken, quickening advance spreading on the quantum communication and computing. Done deal, y'all. So check out that article. Next article, very important one. My man Kevin Post uh, sent me this one. This comes from 
allafrica.com. And it says Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe braces for Zimbabwe dollar return. And in this article, uh, they're, they're talking about the return of the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe dollar. And for those of you uh, that know what happened to the hyperinflation that hit Zimbabwe, here's the difference. Zimbabwe is going to back their currency with real money. They're going to back their coupon with real money. And the real money, that some of the things they're going to back it by was gold. You better get ahead of this before everybody else gets in line before you. So, so important. And how do you do that? You have to leverage yourself. It's always about, it's always about control, investing, leverage, and uh, the, the, the information that you have. So very, very, very important. Control, investment, leverage, critical. Where proper leverage, leverage are you using? You should be leveraging currency for money. You should never leverage yourself as currency over money. You are broke. You are broke then. So very, very, very important. Okay, so that, that article is, is huge. They, they really don't give uh, the, uh, give um, credence to Zimbabwe. They're just talking about the, uh, hyper, the super hyperinflation that happened, which is going to happen here. So very, very, very important for, for you to do that. If Zimbabwe is going to be backing their currency by gold, why aren't you backing your labor by it? The energy that you expend to be doing that. Okay, next one. And then we'll catch on that a little bit later. Next one, this comes from Alt Times. China launch of the Petro Yuan will be a wake-up call. Check out that article. Then um, we got this one from Natural News. Ten essentials must have items before the next natu- natural disaster strikes. And we're going to get into that. And those were the articles that I posted um, that I, I wanted you to really highlight. And today's show is the 96-hour margin call, a glimpse at the black market rise. The day your world changed forever. In this margin, in this uh, 96 hour margin, I'm going to do it a little different than what we've done in the past. I'm not going to go through sit sim uh, scenario role playing. What we're going to do on this 96 hour margin call is I want to give you a glimpse as to something that could be extremely significant in your life. And I know it will be. When? Don't care when. Because when it does happen, it's too late before it happens is the most important thing most important thing and this is a glimpse at the black market rise the day your world changed forever so that is today's show and if you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time give us a call 866-510-9025 866-510-9025 and before we do that one of the things that you know Rise had talked about Cuba and how uh, Russia was going is, is, is not uh, you know they're not supporting it the way it, they have before in the, in the past think about the importance of that why did Russia support the, Cuba in the past because it gave them leverage as a threat to the United States. You get it? They don't need to threaten the United States anymore. The United States is insignificant. Either one, because they've lost. Two, been surrendered. Or three, combination of, of, of three is that it can't do what it says or number one, the, the most important one, number four, is because that's what the system wants it to do. All empire, every empire shall fall. The system needs it to fall. That's what the indicator is there. That's why Cuba is no longer relevant. In the 60s, it was relevant. It was relevant as a, as a way to control the everyday masses of the people in the world. 
Cuba has no more leverage in that direction anymore. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need it when you have the BRIC nations. It doesn't need it when you have the overall changing of, changing of the economic paradigm. Doesn't need it when the crisis of the threat of the crisis that was before is actually going to make itself, play itself out. You don't need it anymore. The very, very telling sign. And what are you doing with the signs that are being told to you? They tell you. And we talk about it here. And it's the only thing that I talk about because we spent, you know, we, there's been enough public awareness about foolishness. There's been enough public sat- saturation about consumerism. It's been enough, it's been enough, it's been enough, it's been enough. So I'm not trying to entertain you. I'm just speaking from the standpoint of us being sovereign, what we should be looking at. I don't care, you know, I really don't care what, what the system says we can and can't talk about. But there's a, a, a ethical practice that I do believe in, you know, not, not cursing because it's a family show and, and the young people we need to, even though they hear it and everywhere else, but they don't need to hear it from us. They're going to hear it, but they should be shown as how they're going to, at some point, they're going to stop, they're going to stop using those, those words. Not necessary to describe. Sometimes it's appropriate. But, Every word has a energy, has a resonance, frequency, has a spirit. Every single one. So, you know, I know it's been popular throughout our human engagement to to be entertained as much as we, because everything is entertainment. Because that's how you keep the people from doing what? Being self-sufficient in creating solutions. They're too busy having a good time. They're too busy fostering a a actual chemical release within the body and from within your brain. We become addicted to it. It's a very, very deadly drug. It's a very, very deadly chemical that can become a drug when it is used outside of its purpose because it's overdosing. It's an overindulgence. You're overindulging ourselves in something that is deadly. And it really teaches us, it's really some of the catalysts for everything else that we overindulge in. And what we fail to participate in that is healthy for us. There are a lot of things that we fail to participate in in the things that are extremely healthy for us. Very, very dangerous. So just wanted to say that. So we talk about whatever the heck we want to talk about, um, and and we go from wherever it is that we want. I don't really much care about uh, entertaining, don't care about fame, don't care about being popular, don't care, don't care, don't care. It's all about us, you know, resonating with like-minded individuals and capturing that overall potential for a direction that has a, a, a benevolency that is that brings about a, a, a universal balance. So that being said, let's continue in the program. So that's what I wanted to say about Cuba, great, great article that was there. Okay, now jump into today's show. What I want to do is about jump into today's show. Rise had the eight things. I want to go across some of these ten things real quick, and you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. And at any time, if you'd like to jump in on the conversation, give us a call. Very important. We'd love to hear from you. So necessary. And we will touch on this uh, Zimbabwe story uh, on Financial Friday. Must do that. Uh, if we're going to have a Financial Friday, I may be out of town. Uh, looks like I will. Um, so just let me give you a heads up. I will try to do a a show um, that c- can be uh, recorded but won't be live, okay? All right, so here we go. Got this from Natural News. 
Okay, now there's one thing I, on air, I don't like to give out some of the things that you should have and this and that. Um, I really would like for you to research that or uh, we do that from our classes and everything else because it's, it's, it would be more specific to the individuals that really do want to do that. Um, and, and I think that that's a, essential because uh, when when you're really serious about some things, then you, you do certain things to do it. Um, and it's very, very important. So let's go over some, this is some basic stuff. And this is um, 10 essentials must have items to have before the, ne- before the next natural disaster strikes. 10 essentials must have items to, to have before the next nat- natural disaster strikes. And I will say national disaster strikes. In God we trust. Okay, here we go. So, Real quickly, says uh, the article says, and this is from Natural News, being prepared for a natural disaster is important, especially if you want to survive. Disaster preparedness starts by having an emergency bag at home. However, do you know which are the most important items that you must have in case of a natural disaster? Here's a list of 10 things. Excuse me, here's a list of 10 essential must-have items in case of a natural disaster. Now, this is all speculative in, in the overall. There's so many variables, but everything, little thing that helps. Number one, water. Number two, okay, let me just say this. One of the most important items that you will need to have in your disaster preparedness kit is water. After a disaster, acquiring clean drinking water may become more difficult. One person needs at least one to two gallons of water a day. A gallon of water should be enough for a person for three days. In case of an evacuation, you can try to keep a supply of two weeks of water worth at home. Number two, supply of food. And I would, I have my own opinions about uh, water and everything else. Um, it, it's in, we'll get into some of that. I will say just having a supply of water is not enough at all. Um, one of the things that from our precious, I mean, from our training classes, you know, being able to purify water is more important than stored water, much more important. Much, much more important. Very, very important. That was one of the things that Rise had posted, uh, which is essentially so good. Next one, supply of food. Food is essential to survive. Food, foods that are easy to prepare and non-perishable, such as canned soups, meat, vegetables, fruits, should be included in your disaster preparedness kit. Also, a move, move this a mechanized can opener in the for opening the canned goods. They should be enough food supplies for three days in case of an evacuation and two weeks supply at home. Okay, so check out that. Number three, shelter. If you lose your home and you need to evacuate, you'll be required, you, you excuse me, you require an emergency blanket, a sleeping bag, or a regular blanket and a tent. So better include these items in your disaster preparedness kit. Yep. Number four, medical supplies. It is important to prepare a first aid kit and a supply of important medicines for at least one week. And essentially, an essential medical supplies such as an inhaler. A first aid kit must include sterile gauze, dressings, uh, rolling gauzes, bandages, adhesives, all of that stuff. Yep, this is pretty much some of the basic stuff. Next one, number six, light. There is a high probability that a a power outage will occur either before, during, or after the natural disaster. When there is no electricity, there will be no light. So prepare by packing flashlights. There will only be no light at night. That is not absolutely true. There will be light. Next one, but when you need it at night, won't be there. Next one, a radio. Communication is important in, emer- in any emergency. Okay, having a battery power AMFS radio is important in case of a natural disaster. You can rely on your mobile cell phone during uh, emergencies because they may not have, you can't do it because they will not have cell service. So, okay, but you can use them for other things, so just be aware of that. Okay, next. Uh-oh. Next one, cash. 
Prepare at least fifty dollars on hand in small bills. A phone charge, a uh, a a phone change as machines do not work without electricity. Yep, phones change in, in as cash. Yep, phones and I don't know what they wrote there. Okay, yeah, so very true. You're going to need some cash. Next one, cell phone and cell and the cell phone charger. Uh, sanitation, uh, excuse me, sanita- sanitary uh, human uh, hygiene products. Sanitation in 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 public. I mean, in personal hygiene items, including um, all of the essential ones. You know what they are: uh, toilet paper, toothbrush, uh, soap, um, and the other necessary items uh, for proper uh, human hygiene. Um, also, uh, personal documentation. Uh, save and bring your your personal uh, documentation, such as your driver's license, birth certificate, passports, insurance, and all of that. Uh, proof of, of residency and all of that is important. Um, in there. Okay, so those were the ten things, and then there was Roz had some some things, the eight things. Now I said that for, for one of the things that for today's show, and today's show is about preparing for the black market. And one of the things that what we do when we prepare, and I re- I read this for this reason, we spend too much time for those. Once you become aware. We spend entirely too much time on the short term or the known crisis or a crisis that can happen, and we spend too much time on the immediate after effect. We do not spend any time on preparing for the long uh, uh, duration or the, the, the long term consequences of that act of in God we trust. We spend too much energy and too much time on the immediate, the first 48 hours. And we spend nothing on hour 49, 50, and so on. When the hurricane went through, I want you to think about the importance of that. When the hurricane went through went through Puerto Rico, the people survived the first hour after, many survived the first hour, second hour, third hour, 24 hours, 48 hours later. The, the, the dying and the true effect of the overall storm is, still be, is, is now happening. We don't plan for that. It doesn't matter how much you plan for it for two weeks, When these acts of God and, and God we trust happen, look at your your physical paper dollar bill says in God we trust. When that that overall deity, that man deity decides to destroy, and that's not the great creator. That is actually this is why they have those emblems and on there and everything else is because that is nothing more than the overall policies and procedures that were decided by man. That's the God. They consider themselves the gods and you are their worshipers. And they insist that you do that. And we've been taught to do that. The only way that that stops is you Decide no longer will I participate, but let's go on. See, there's a very dangerous precedent that has been set. And that dangerous precedent that has been set is that we do not emphasize sovereignty. Sovereignty means that you are always prepared to endure because you have positioned yourself to be able to endure for generations ahead. A darn storm A three-day storm is not the threat. A short engagement from an earthquake is not the threat. The power going out in the first hour is not the threat. The power staying out. And we don't prepare for that. We don't position ourselves that way. We think a little backpack, a little backpack is going to sustain you. 
I would say no. What it is only going to do is position you to withstand as much, as big as your backpack is, is the hours in which you'll be able to endure. You got a small backpack? You got a small amount of time. Don't have a backpack? The misery starts early. With a backpack, the the misery is pain delayed. But opportunity subject to being lost. You're spending far too much. We don't prepare for the long term. We don't invest forward. We don't prepare generations ahead of us. We only prepare for the immediate and think that that's going to be suffice. That's why the system gives you doomsday preppers. It gives you the, 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 the different things about how to prepare because what they're doing is that they're positioning you up to fail. They're not setting you up for success. They're setting you up for the pain to be overwhelming to where you surrender. How do you do that? You never prepare with a short-term mentality. You prepare like you're investing, like you're leveraging. You prepare like you're controlling. The proper way to prepare is through control, not through ownership. The proper way to prepare is to invest, not to consume. The proper way to prepare is to have leverage not to be on the scales, given leverage. And it's so important that we understand this and we change our overall mentality because this system has taught us to obey and they've supplanted in us the, over, the, the, the triggers for us to respond the way that they want us to do. And we do. They'll give you a measure of the truth, but the overall fundamental Desire and the objective is the lie that they want you to live by. You could have been prepared for an event happening, but how many people prepare for after the event generations later? And if you look at preparing, no one really sets you up for that. This is one of the things, this is why collective prudence is so important. This is why doing the proper things now while, while everything is still, still in a position that you can accumulate. You, should, you are in the phase of accumulation. Once that phase of accumulation ends, guess what? What you accumulated becomes your leverage, your investment, and your control. Say that again. It becomes your investment, your leverage, and your control. Sorry, y'all. A backpack won't give you no leverage, won't give you no investment, won't give you no control. It ain't enough. Call back later. I know y'all may have heard me say that. It was an old skit from the Little Rascals, which I absolutely, as I got older, I hated, hated it, but that was one of the I like that one scene. It ain't enough. Call back later. So we have to change our overall thinking. In today's show, the 96-hour margin call, a glimpse into the rise of the black market, the day your life changed forever, critical. It's all about Control, leverage, investment, and accumulation. We need to be accumulating the, 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 the proper thing. 
One of the things that we need to be accumulating is our overall collective energy towards a purpose. It's the most important money that we can rely on. And how it should go, it should be go from you first to your family and then to those around you. Case in point, you individually listen to this show should have that mindset to mindset as you as an individual person because sovereignty starts from the resonant frequency of one. Not from many, not from this their safety in numbers, not from an army, not from a government, comes from the individual great creation abilities in the overall energy and free will that was given to you sincerely. Very, very important. Starts with that individual. Then that individual may have the family of a, of a bond that is fostered in commitment and that responsibility is equally and jointly shared. Then is expanded out to realizing the necessity of creating an outward mo uh, mobility to go past the family unit that goes into the community, that goes into the generational ways that you can invest forward. Without that, everybody's on welfare. Waiting for the affairs of the system, the welfare of their system to be established. Welfare has nothing to do about the recipient. Welfare has everything to do with the controller. Why are people on welfare? Because someone else is controlling their energy. They are the, they are the recipients of the well, and believe me, it's more than fair. You just, we can't take a short term and a insufficient energy to a threat that has been universally amplified. Just won't be enough. In the backpack ain't gonna be enough. That that thought process of three days two weeks ain't going to be enough because whenever it hits when the sh boop, boop, boop stuff hits the fan you won't know the difference between two weeks and two hours you remember Ross said that one of his family members had came across a person that was in a daze that, that was in a funk, that's shock. Shock knows no beginning or end. It could traumatize and, and cause a, a chemical imbalance in you for the rest of your physical life. Very critical that we start resonating more with the truth. We're getting ready to go to a commercial break. If you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Today's show, very, very important. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. 96-hour margin call. We're going to take a glimpse at the black market rise. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break.
Okay. Black Talk Radio since 2008, providing new black media for the masses. Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, definitely give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. We're going to jump into, um, and, um, going to jump into today's show, the 96-hour margin call, a glimpse at the black market rise, the day that your world changed forever. Uh, and my man Scotty said, hey, we have the Preppers Corner in BTR community. Yes, definitely, definitely highly suggested all of you. Uh, engage in that and be a part of that uh, because I think it's very, 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 very important. Now, I want to uh, jump into uh, the show real quickly, but I don't want to keep uh, the callers uh, waiting, and then we'll get into uh, the show. I, th- I think that's uh, Brother or Sister Davis that's there. Brother or Sister Davis, is that you? It's always good to hear the voice of a friend. Always good to hear the voice of a friend, my brother. What's going on, Brother Davis? I was listening to you, man. As usual, I kind of get back into a state of philosophical understanding of what we can do with the circumstances right. that we're in. But we fail to realize a lot of times the blockage that stops us is our psychological imbalance because we've been bought up in the West. We think like our value system and our value system is their value system so therefore when people talk about money they talk about it from a specific standpoint of need right or have and those people who are really zealots talk about it as if it's a god we have to understand that because we're so unique anything outside of us is just a tool something we use to accomplish something else. And I'm going to tell you, brother, regardless of what we go through, we have to start inside, utilize the tool outside to fit the purpose we're trying to achieve. I just wanted to add that, man. Let me go back in the back room and listen again. <laughs> well well said. And, Brother Davis, is it, you know, that that's exactly... Uh, the the overall emphasis of in in so true because you and I and us collectively we have the same intrinsic value as everything that the great creator has made there is prosperity and sustainability from within those the, within the execution of that will the sun chooses the earth chooses to use its energy for sustainability, not just for itself, but all the living things. Because all of the other living things do what? They equally share their energy for the sun and the earth. We have become, as Brother Davis has said, we've established the value system of a different God. Or, let me just say, of the guy, the one that's on the piece of paper, has nothing to do with your overall physical abilities and creation, has everything to do with the subjugation of that, the, the overall control of that. And so important, so important that we get this from a sincere perspective that perspective that's sustainable doesn't matter if you like this person or that person that's really shallow liking of this person and that person is shallow it does not sol- solve anything you don't like a person so what what does that change what what solution does that provide none whatsoever but engaging with each other 
provides for solutions that go beyond your selfishness, our selfishness. It actually can go into an investment into those that we have yet not named. And I'm not talking about an investment in what this system has put into our psyche as the reason why we live. You know, their overall the land of milk and the land of milk and honey and, and the overall decrypt, I mean uh, depiction of uh, of heaven. Look at that again. It looks like yo M- what, what was that old show that was on? Uh, uh, yo MTV Cribs. That's what that's because that's what it is. It's all made by the the hands of a slave of one that owns or or the one that controls the one that owns. And what is it that they own? What is it that they control? The overall energy of of the people. See, the system knows the value of you. In order for it to know the value of you, it has to get you to where you don't recognize it. And that is a very fragile, fleeting thing. But they have coursed it out through trial and error throughout human history of all people of the species and they got the whole the the whole globe in so many perspectives outside of a few resonate in it very hey. few are trying to break it they're not trying to break it not trying to break it yeah go ahead Ross you just made me think of something um with what you've been discussing when you talk about sovereignty I just think of it in the sense of living in accordance with nature and living a sustainable existence and what the what this system of white supremacy has done is it's created two worlds there's a terraformed world which is the world we live in the cities and the places that they've created and the system that they set up that they they give the impression it's separate from the real world which is nature so every so often nature will show us who's really in control by destroying swaths of land or they'll manipulate weather to do just the same thing. Mm -hmm. But yet we've been conditioned to live in the matrix world. So we no longer live sustainably or in concert with nature and the educational system is not geared towards teaching children from a young age how to do so. Whereas when you look at, you know, our great, 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 however many great grandparents, they lived off the land. So they knew things that made them sustainable. They knew things that would sustain them in the event of a natural disaster or an unnatural disaster. These are all of the things that have been taken from us by going through their school system in their terraformed parts of the planet that they call cities and metropolises. So ultimately, when you speak of sovereignty, you're speaking of leaving the concept and mindset and even the space of artificiality of um, of the terraformed concrete jungle to live sustainably the way that we were meant to. And that just brought me to a whole nother understanding too. Well, not understand, but something that I said before, never said it on this show, I don't think, or any other, but um, this is something I've discussed in, you know, just lectures and things like that, that um, that's how I know that one of the ways that I totally know that our ancestors did not evolve from monkeys is the fact that no animal evolves beyond its niche. You'll never see a a great white shark turn into something else. All it's going to do is perfect itself to exploit the niche that it lives in. And human beings are no different in that regard. No monkey is going to turn into another species of higher monkey or higher primate. It's going to grow genetically to exploit its own niche. No animal evolves past what it was designed by the creator to do and be. And what it is is that they have terraformed the planet and had us psychologically devolve to embrace their system and now we're trying to evolve back to our system which is the real system which is the real world um, which is the non-terraform part of the planet that we can exploit to live sustainably so that's what I wanted to say thanks again wonderful show well said well said well said Rise um, um, go ahead Scotty yeah so I have made a post um, the other day about a lot of miscommunication comes in because we're not using the same definitions of words 
All right, so one word to somebody might mean one thing, and then to another person, it might mean something else. So I understand that you're, and I could be wrong, but when I hear you speak of sovereignty, I'm thinking of it in metaphorical terms. Because when I look at the dictionary of what a sovereign is, that's a king and a queen. And sovereign persons, like a king and a queen, collect taxes. They don't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. We pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So we are we are subject to a higher authority and whether or not we want to admit it or not i i just got to be real mm-hmm. i got to be real is that they're taking i don't want to pay these people property tax or any other kind of tax you know cuz we're not really benefiting from from it um and mm-hmm. so but if i don't pay it then guess what i'll be put into prison where they have right. values for your black body or anybody else's body. Uh, in the state of New mm-hmm. York, Khalif Browder's body was worth up to uh, over $200,000 a year sitting in Rikers Island. And so, you know, right. you, you mentioned the value of people. Oh, they put a value on us. Just depends yes. on where you at or how much they're going to be able to get out your body. If you on a prison, they going in a prison, they going to maximize their returns. Whether you just sitting there in a the cell or whether they got you out there doing call center work for one of these major corporations. All right. So I, I just like to keep it real in reality so that we can recognize the situation that, that we are really facing. And the only way I see us coming out of this is for USA Inc. to be the corporation to be dissolved. As long as that corporation is in operation with the guns backing it, because you can issue all the laws you want. If you ain't got nobody to enforce those laws, then hey, it's just something on a piece of paper. But if I if if I had a power to arrest you because of that piece of paper and throw you in prison, then I got a lot of power over your body. And a lot of people need to wake up wake up to that. Um, the other thing that you said about value is we don't value ourselves enough. That's true. We also don't value other people. You know, we don't right. put the proper value on, on, on other people. And, you know, um, in terms of you were talking about creating wealth and, and sustainability. You know, when I hear people talking about going somewhere else, I sit here and I look around where I live in Mount Holly, North Carolina. Um, and I read about this guy who has a business around the corner from me. As far as, you know, we don't have corners really in, in the rural area, but he lives <laughs> around the way from me. And this guy is running a deer processing uh, store, which I've always seen it there, been operating it for years and stay in business pretty much all year round. If they're not processing deer, they processing wild hogs, they processing bears. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, this dude is making all this money. I need to get with some brothers in, in, in the hood, in this hood yeah. I live in that are hunters and stuff. And we might need to pool our resources and yeah. open up our own deer processing place. But but when you talk about heaven, I'm in heaven. Cause I you know what? I got clean water. I can grow food. You know, I don't have a garden right now, but always somebody growing stuff. And when the man across the street always giving me his bounty from his garden, then I'm gonna use his resources. But I would never go hungry. How tell me how I'm gonna go hungry with this kind of wildlife around here. So, you know, I think we do need to make a move, but we need to make a move from the cities to the rural areas. Just wanted to share those thoughts. Well said. Well said, Scotty. Well said, Roz. And it was is I mean it's it's so you know, one of the things that I think is real, real important is that this is the black market. 
This is the facilitating of the black market. And the thing about the black market is that it's, it's something that you have to have a desire to create. How are you going to create that market? The, I would never tell you how to do it, that this is the right way, that's the wrong way, this is what you got to do. All I do know is that I have made a decision that I, I wanted to become as sovereign as I possibly could be and resonate with that and grow in that because there is, you know, because everything that we're dealing with is a progression of generations. It's not just under the influence of what we have seen, but it's actually been under the influence and the energy of the past, and it's strong. So every person has, you know, it, it is, is, is as Scotty said, it, there's different meanings to different people. And there is no, there, I never use a dictionary anymore. I don't use a dictionary anymore. I just talk, and I don't try to, to bring good, good Queen's English because that means I'm bringing the good decree of the queen to bear the spell, not my purpose. Whenever, whenever we talk, the two individuals should be able to talk. And if someone can go, mm-hmm, and they understand what that person said, mm-hmm, over, mm-hmm, may not be a word, but guess what? It, it definitely delivers a message. Hey, Dave, so let, me, let me say this your about this. It's See, you've been on because it actually is a depiction of your free will and your energy. Dave, let me say something and for about everyone. That. Yeah, okay. I've known you for a long time now. Even though we never met, we've yes, met. Sir. So when you're talking to me, I understand what you're saying because we've communicated with each other for so long. So what I'm yes. referencing though is people I don't know. I don't know what right. you're talking about because I don't know how they're using words. Again, I'm a big stickler for right. the dictionary. I've been reading the dictionary right. since I first read about Malcolm X studying the dictionary. So, but <laughs> right. but I understand what you're saying because I because I communicate with you. I know yeah, your right. language. Right. I don't know everybody else's language, and there becomes yeah. miscommunication between the parties when yep. we don't speak each other's language. That's what I meant. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I No, totally, totally agree. And it's so funny. I remember uh, we did a, a town hall uh, thing, and Scott, and it was so funny. Scotty said, I already knew what everybody here was going to say, and I bust out laughing. And Scotty knew exact because of his relationship. And he knows, he knows the the – the people on uh, the, from the uh, network, the the different programs. He knows that that it, Scotty knows me. Scotty knows me, and so it's very very important that we do know, do know who you want to resonate with, who, do know who you want to be aligned with. You don't have to always agree, but you know something that there's a valuable interest that you may not that they provide and that they have that you don't. And one of the things I know that I don't have is I don't have the necessary energy to get to where what's important to me by myself. And, it's, and, and that's because I don't want to get there by myself. I want to be able to, to share with like-minded individuals. And, and so it's very, very important. You know, one of the things that, that Roz was saying that was, that was very, very critical, we do live in the systems world, but even in the systems world, and, and go back and listen to what Roz was saying, go back and listen to what Brother Davis was saying, go back and listen to what Scotty said. Hear those brothers clearly. One of the things that Raj said that stuck out was so important. In spite of all of the developments inside of the cities, a weed will always grow through the concrete. In spite of the mon, mon Satan spraying, in spite of this and that, the weed will always see, and we call it a weed, not even realize that some of them are completely edible the things that will get you through so that you'll have sustainability, but see our overall appetite and our overall, our appetite has changed. Our, our, 
our our reliance and, and being able to to deal with certain digestive things have changed. The weakening of our organs to where they need to have this 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 process from has changed. There has been an inducement and an addiction through food that has caused our bodies to be not strengthened one bit, weakened. The black market is important because on that black market, it's a black market for a reason. It is an objection. Black market I'm talking about is may not be the one that you may think that I'm speaking of. The black market that I'm speaking of is the overall engagement and the overall desire and movement of a collective people deciding that we need to do this and do that. And what you do, you have, you've heard from Brother Davis, you heard from myself, you heard from Rosie, you heard from Scotty so far. Well, all of those energies come together. I know what Scotty's talking about. Very relevant. I know what Rise is talking about. Very relevant. I know what Brother Davis is talking about. Very relevant. And then what you do is you come together with that. And you understand, and you know from having that relationship which one applies at that appropriate time. And you'll find something. They all do. Because they are all equally important. Scotty may be taller than me. Roz is taller than me. So he's going to have a different view of things. Scotty understands this and that. I don't have a clue what this and that is. Brother Davis knows this and that. I don't have a clue in it. Or I may be limited in how much I know. But collectively, when we bond ourselves together, it's strength. Let me tell you something about those that control the system. They absolutely hate each other. But big business has a way of making enemies friendly. Why in the world can't we create the overall social engagement based in harmony? How much more powerful could we be? But it's still something that has to be enacted upon. There has to be a direction. It may not be the perfect direction at the at the uh, at that moment, but it is perfect in its overall moving forward. It has to engage the black market. Here's what I want to say about the black market. I want to give it in, into these, put it into to these terms. You're familiar with the black market from Venezuela. You're familiar from the black market from the United States, from let's say from prohibition, from um, which it was which was nothing more than a black market that was created by the overall government. You know it from the drug trade, which is a black market that was created by the government. You know it from uh, b- buying and selling uh, of people selling uh, stolen goods and everything else. You know, once again, that was a black market that was created by the government or created by the controllers. They want that type of black market. You know. So you have an idea of what I'm talking about on that black market. Let me t- the, the thing about that, black, about that black market is this. It's completely controlled, and it's probably a little more honest because it's controlled by what? Where it's considered to be the gangsters. And guess who the gangsters are? The same ones that send you a tax bill. The same ones that write laws. The same entities that invoke policy, the same ones that exact austerity measures. That's the black market. Because that was not the market that that is the predominant market in the universe. We're just made to think that it is. Because if it was, then the weed wouldn't grow through the concrete. Man, we can go through the concrete. Let me. Uh, we're getting ready to go to a uh, one second, brother Davis. One. Oh, we got. No, we got time. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have some time. So go ahead, brother Davis. I wanted to also add that the system is designed for your destruction. Make no mistake. Everything that they do is designed for your destruction, and we have learned to emulate these people 
thinking because of the way we were taught and are attacking our children and changing the nature of them as we speak. So when you look at a system like welfare, what is designed is a hand up and not a hand out. And all of a sudden you see it as a, a survival source. You give them control over your life. The whole thing that we must be doing right now is Scotty mentioned, you know, getting outside the city is good because the city is a controlled environment. They can they can do anything they want to a mass group of people in the city. And here's the catch-22. All of these programs that they point out, the welfare mom and that sort of thing, there are more white people absorbing that, the resources of that program than black people. But black people come from a perspective of, well, I need this, I need that. We need to supply our own needs. And I'm going to tell you something. I got out the city because I could tell that whatever is at the, at the bottom of their plan, they're going to start in the cities. Hey, I'm Brother not Davis. saying this here to discourage you. I'm, I'm, ch- I'm trying to encourage you because I'm going to tell you something. As long as you go to them with your hand out or in a situation of need, you give them control. I just wanted to add that to you. Hey, Dave, I want to respond to something Brother Davis said because I live among these people. All right. I mean, I live in a small black community. It's probably about maybe counting the children. It's about 150 of us within this half mile uh, radius and and been here for over 200 years. Okay, but some brother that but we're surrounded by these white folks that Brother Davis was just talking about who are the primary beneficiaries of Medicaid, Medicare and food stamps. You know, I, and, and one thing to consider, um, we know that during the 90s that Hillary Clinton and the Republicans and Bill Clinton passed what was called welfare reform. And what did she say? We got a bunch of single lazy mothers and we need to cut the food stamps. <laughs> and they cut a mm-hmm. billion dollars from social service. And guess where they moved that billion to? To the fund to to pay for privatized prisons. The exact yeah. amount, one billion. So, because of that action that was unfairly targeting black people who they thought was the primary beneficiaries of that, but they have made it so that not many of us can qualify for it because we have this felony slave status and what have you. We're not the ones who are really benefiting from that program. And because of racism, they may have prepared us. Just like I said the other day about how racism in medicine is why you don't see a bunch of black folks out here overdosing and strung out on opioids. Because, see, the doctor wouldn't give me no Oxycontin or nothing like that. He wasn't going to give the black person the good drugs no, because Negroes can handle pain better than white folks, so we just going to give you some old generic mess. Well, guess what? We didn't get hooked on that Oxycontin, and now we ain't the ones that's dying by the thousands, you know, uh, uh, on a monthly basis. So so I, I guess there's a silver lining, I guess, in, in sometimes how racists treat us, but, but make no mistake, if you're taking my taxes to pay for a program, then I'm not looking at it like I'm getting a handout. I'm looking at it like I'm getting back what I put into the pot. And I know that's not what you meant, Brother Davis, but I I just want to, because all the years that I work and pay taxes, and then if I find myself out of work, you think I'm going to go hungry and not sign up for food stamps? I'm going to make a withdrawal of what I've been putting in. Now, am I going to try to live off of it? No, because actually they made that impossible. There's a five-year limit uh, uh, to those benefits. And and so I I just wanted to add add that. Yeah, You know what? Because I'm I'm responding to it, Scotty. Great, 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 great points. There's a couple of things I want to. We're going to go to a commercial break. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, on a glimpse at the black market, that 
The day your life changed forever. Give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-9025, as we go into the last part of the show. Very, very important. We'd love to hear from you. You're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. I'm, all, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think, yes, I think Scotty dro- uh, dropped off real. Okay, we're back. All right. Thanks, Scotty. Um, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. And uh, look like we're going to have to have part two of this, because this is uh, very necessary, very, very important. Um, so today's show, uh, we've heard a, a lot of great perspective in 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 all of it, in my overall uh, estimation, is necessary and part of the individuals that I absolutely respect and love um, and who I have collective prudence with um, and will look forward to to building with. uh, And this is why these individuals mean so much to me. And I see their value in everything. So today's show is the 96-hour margin call, a glimpse at the black market rise, the day your world changed forever. You know, just before we went to the commercial break, Scotty had talked about the overall, uh, the silver lining in the overall racist uh, agenda that has been perpetuated throughout human history. And I just have a little different perspective of it, but it's, it's the same thing that, so no one makes mistakes that, that Scotty's saying. I, I say this. The system knew exactly what it was doing because the system always needs to have a racist agenda. And they're going to, they realize the benefit of a racist agenda is to change the race. Is to change the race from one to another throughout human history, where those that were under a so-called racial system in during this century, they do not live to the next century, because by living that long, they'll start to see what's really going on. Who do you think the new I'm not going to say the word. You know what I'm, what I'm saying are going to be. It's not going to be what it has been the past three and four hundred years. They are going to change it to someone else. And that process of changing that is a methodical process. They knew exactly what they were doing because that is the overall social order of control. They knew. And right now when you see what you're seeing, you're seeing what was used for an agenda at a certain period of time for black people. It is going to be used against everybody else that's in the overall confines of the divide, the great divide. It's an operation. It's a psyops. You can only get someone to give up the truth by giving them a lie. Well, they no longer resonate with the truth. They're responding to the lie. System knew exactly what it was doing. And it's played this, this self, it's played this hand for many a years. In today's world, what you see is that they want the so-called United States to fall, and they want it to fall by war. And how do you do that? You break up the overall identity of what was known as America. What was America known as? You already know what they told you in school and what the overall policy and procedures have been since you've been here. They want that to crumble 
because it's just like it's just like building a a machine. You build weak points in the machine so that the machine will stop after the weak points are broken so that you can go in and replace the weak points so that the machine will not just completely fall apart. You let it sever itself, you let it break itself at its weakest points, then you can go in and replace the weak, weak point with another weak point for the one that's already been broken. Hate has an expiration date, just like milk. Just like milk. So and what I'm seeing is that, not saying this, it's just my opinion, doesn't make it right. What I'm seeing is that this is the psyops playing itself completely out. This is why you will have different organizations, different sects, and different divides of people come up as a group from time to time. You've seen it. And how do you do that? You have to first chemically induce them to say, you've seen that in so many different ways from what's in the food, from what's in the water, from what's put on the television, what is put out as acceptable. See, the system will always tell you what you have to accept in order to do what? To be a good American. For you to be a politically correct American, this is what you have to accept. And anybody else, and we're gonna, we want you to object to it because what we're going to do is that we're going to get the popular opinion swayed this way. This is through what media, this is the overall true purpose of the media, to tell you what you're to think. Because if someone's telling you what to think, you're not thinking at all. You're regurgitating. Just regurgitating. Right now, I see the system as wanting to completely have to have the complete empire of the U.S. fall. And guess what? When the empire of the U.S. fall, they'll bring a new so-called beacon of freedom that will, will, will establish itself somewhere. But freedom doesn't mean sovereignty. Freedom is what is a law. The great creator didn't give you freedom. Because re freedoms require that you do what? That you adhere to the letter of the law. You he adhere to the Constitution. You adhere to a contract. And then you pro proclaim, these are my constitutional rights. The great creator doesn't give you rights because there is nothing to make right. There is no wrong that defines right. That definition is created when someone chooses to overextend their bounds to where their overall lives is more important than yours and you have to be subjugated to them. Now we have a definition of a wrong. Now we have a definition of a wrong. I really see this, this system moving to where it wants to completely destroy the the foundation of what was known as the United States because it is necessary to maintain control. Then there'll be a new beacon of freedom that will come out of the East and the whole world will rave that this is the place to go. This is where you want to go. This is where you need to go to make it. This is going to be the country that gives you all of the rights and the freedoms. They did the same thing in Germany. They just don't tell you about it. But if you do your research on it, you'll see it. Germany had some Germany was so powerful because of one because of what is industrial prowess why was it so how was it able to meet the industrial needs that it, it made because it realized and it was able to acquire by set, by hook and by crook the overall secrets of the of the ancient ways to live and they had a boatload of silver to bring it to full fruition so scientifically, they were able to use that, that overall knowledge to benefit them. And what did the system want to do? What did the system want to do? They built them up into this overall economic giant. And at the appropriate time, 
because the population on the world was getting deep. They had to have some de a depopulation measure. So what did they do? Germany had some of the most standing rights that you have so-called here, from the, the, the choice of, of sexual orientation to, to everything else that so-called Americans pride themselves on. And it's a setup. It always has been and it always will be. There will be concentration camps in this country. And when they tell you to prepare, they tell you to prepare with a backpack because that's what you're going to need to walk to the concentration camps known as the FEMA regions that was devised by the same system. Oh, and they won't care what color you are because they equally hate all. And they're going to make the example out of so that the world will do what? Be distracted from what's really going on and attracted to their emotional pullings. Where are they being tugged to? Where are they? What images are being presented to them and is occupying their sovereignty? I agree with moving out of the cities. It's not just a smart thing to do. It's the most practical thing to do. Doesn't take a rocket scientist. It's not that hard. But it is that necessary. But even no matter where you go, if you align yourself with other individuals that resonate in that same overall objective but having different methods, you add different spices to your overall meal so that your, your body can, can acquire the full nutrients. So often we, 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 we eat based off of taste and all of the taste is full of poison. You ever notice everything that we, we eat a drink, in order for it to be good, it has to have sugar in it because the poison is good. When was the last time we ate something that was of the natural ecosystem that was bland and you said it was good? Usually we'll hear this, oh man, this is, this is bitter. This is nasty. This needs some salt. Whew. One thing we can never do, we can never, ever, ever underestimate each other nor those that are, have a different agenda and objective than us. Because when you do, you really compromise your ability to distinguish and discern the truth. So, in the glimpse of this black market, what is going to be necessary? In the black market, you know, I was driving and I saw a bunch of warehouses and I saw these warehouses were deep and they were vast. And when we go through this economic collapse by way of war and by way of, uh, of, of civil war, because they will do it, they, they're, they're, they're making that, that position made right now, and they have so many uh, irons in, in the fire, and all of them are going to be coming out white hot and ready to pierce the overall social standing. And when it goes in, it's going to go in, it's going to be painful, and it's going to, and it's going to be real hot. And that's going to cause people to what? Not think from strategy and tactics, but to, to respond out of survival. The feral, they want people to become feral. So, I was watching, I was looking at these, these warehouses. Notice the warehouses around where you live and everything else, if you, if you have some, how, how vast they are. When this overall economy collapses, the inventory within those warehouses 
will be compromised and we will create a black market. And let me tell you something. They put those there for a reason so that that will facilitate it. And when those, and, and we think that that's just where they store it. No, but it's, that's one part of the, the overall planning. That's not the full plan. The full plan is this, that will create a black market, and that black market will be infiltrated by the same individuals that caused the demise. It's happened in Venezuela. I know I have clients that are completely tainted by their new false wealth. They may be rich, but they're not wealthy. And wealth has nothing to do, nothing to do with coupons or what man has deemed as valuable. Has everything to do with what's necessary for harmony and sustainability. So as these, as the economy collapses, believe me, one of the things in the military, there's maritime ships full of new gear and all of the equipment and everything else is put out there for the war to engage. The war will be engaged here. You know what the maritime ships are? It's the warehouses. They're going to allow those warehouses to be full. And they're going to establish a black market. Just when you thought through the overall demise and, and through the, the chaos that the system lost control, it just made a tighter grip on you. Because until we walk away from the system and allow the system to die on a vine, to allow its overall agenda to choke itself to death, to allow its policies into procedures to be just as a snake biting itself and that venom destroying it, that venom continues to flow through our veins because it has something to latch on to. When we get wise, and the only thing that we offer for that snake to bite is itself, it will. And so shall it collapse. But until then, we have to remove ourselves from being the perfect prey and consuming the, the, the overall venom of hate, of low frequency. Low frequency is low frequency. And everybody can choose to, to resonate in low frequency because they choose to. At what expense? Because you want to? Because you didn't like something? That's what the system has taught you to become. And this is the weakness of us all. And we all know we deal with that. But until we conquer it individually by our own, whatever it is that you choose to conquer, you will. Whatever it is that we choose to continue to have dominance over us and have dominion over us, it will. It will. I'm trying to call into you. So the new black market. The new black market. Star, star. What up, Deborah? I didn't even. I didn't even hear you there. Deborah, we got three minutes left. You want to chime in? Yeah, I didn't know I was on here. No, I, <laughs> I know was you did. Make... <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> no, I was gonna make a comment on what Scotty was saying about how dealing with your unemployment or your Social Security money that you have played into this system—that's your money, and. You know, so when they try to make it seem like that you're getting something, that's something that you paid into the system. So you know, I don't, I don't, I disagree with how they want to run everybody through these hoops and and to get mm -hmm. your money. You did that, you know, and you know, and that's one thing that I think about. Even when I first went and got my Social Security card at 15. And I asked the lady then, 
what will this what does this card do for me and she told me well if you ever come up on a time that you have to deal with disability or whatever that this is where they your money is being set aside from you getting up and going to work and when it comes time to have to use that then that's where you go back to get that money from so that was just my comment I I didn't know I was on here I'm sitting here hidden star star <laughs> no, no, you good, you good, and, and you know what? That, because what you represent is so so important uh, because it's it's true, and I would I would say to everyone, look up the word note, look up the word note, and look on your dollar bill. It says it's a note, and the note is a promise. And every promise that they've made, they make a promise for what? For it to be broken. Yes. For it to be broken. And that's what they do in that case. Scotty wrote this real quick before we get ready to get out of here. Oh, no, let me let me see it. Go. Okay. People are cowards. Oh, oh I don't, wait, wait, wait. I don't know if Scotty wanted me to read this. Let me, let me chill. Uh, let me just surmise it. I put it yeah, in Scotty. the, uh, hey, if I didn't want it out there, I wouldn't put it in a public chat room. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to make sure. I said, wait, let me read you. And my man, Scotty, like, people are cowards. Ain't no, ain't no one making no moves in this country. You see the Catalonians made a move for independence. Cowards in America always try to figure out a way not to confront the system head on. That's how I see it. They pay their taxes like good slaves, myself included. See, th- mm. that is so daggone true. Mm. Not only, not only, Scotty, yourself included, myself and everyone else. Yes. We all do. Until, until we start to look in the mirror, and, and I always like to say this, if you can't pass a mirror and you can't see what the great creator sees, then don't ever look in the mirror. Because this is true. We are cowards. And the reason why we're cowards is because we shudder and we, and we become paralyzed by fear. We don't become motivated to action. They both, you know, a coward and a person of valor experience fear at the exact same time. The only difference is that the coward is paralyzed by fear, can't move, don't want to do nothing. I can't move my arm. I can't move my leg. While the person of valor is motivated to action. No, I'm going to do something about it. But what I do know is that it's, it's healthy for us to, to be critical of ourselves and call ourselves the coward that we really are because there's so much more that we could and should be doing. Let's get to it. So listen, everyone, got to get ready to get out of here. Much love, much respect. We'll, we'll have a part two. And I truly, truly appreciate you all. In so many ways and so many things that the opportunity for us to do is great. But I don't want to uh, infringe on the next show. Melanated Root is coming back on um, right after. So stand by for that. And so it's until then, it's never goodbye. I never say goodbye. And it's never goodbye. As always, we'll see you later. And before you ask for a fortune, make sure to give one away. My man, Brother Braggs, will you be so kind to quickly chime us out of here? And we'll see you all again. Gold dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the month 
weeks leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold.